Now, let's turn to the book of Psalms this morning. And we're turning to a well-known psalm. It's a psalm that we all love. And it's a psalm where we find comfort. And we're turning to Psalm 23, please. The prayer meeting that we had before the service this morning was one of the sweetest prayer meetings that we ever had. Before our service, there was just something unique about it. And in fact, there was some almost, I thought, we're going to preach this message. The, that the way they were speaking and praying, and even some quoted the very text that I'm going to preach from. And you know, that's the Lord, and that's the many ways the Lord confirms His message, and, and it's good that we know that we have the Lord's message. And we're coming to Psalm 23, and the psalmist says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we know that the Lord will bless to our hearts this morning that reading from His own precious truth. As this year ends, friends, and as it fast comes to a close, you know, for so many people this morning, 2015 has been a year that has brought many changes, some big changes. You know what's true, dear friends, this morning, because every year brings changes. And as I've already said, to some very big changes, unexpected changes. And you know, friends, this morning, as we face another new year that's about to dawn, you and I don't know what the changes are going to be that's going to come into your life or my life. Those changes that none of us has control over. For mind you, every year can bring its own struggles. For 2015, Many changes were brought about by death and bereavement. Many homes, death has entered. And 2015 has saw was the year of the empty chair. Just the other week, I went to visit Mary Copeland. And I went to visit her in her home. And I sat with her, and we talked to her, and we listened to her. And I says, Mary, it's a different year the way it for you. This year is ending different, a lot different to the way it began. She says, it is, George, it has. And she says, you know, 
Bertie's sudden passing, it's, it's like a dream just. And I often think, you know, I'm, someday I'm going to wake up and Bertie's going to be there beside me, but No, 2015, she says, has brought big changes to my home. You see, child of God this morning, every year brings big changes. And if it's not death and bereavement, Often it's sickness and disease. Last Friday a week ago, we went out to bring our presents out to Tracy's aunt and uncle, dairy farmer. All the conversation was going well, and then there was a silence. She says, did you hear about John? He says, no, we never heard about John. Says John's just been diagnosed with prostate cancer. And she says the end of this year is a lot different as to how it began. See, dear child of God, every year has its changes. And every year brings change. And the truth is, none of us wants, none of us in this tabernacle this morning knows what 2016 holds in store for us. But as we come this morning on the threshold of another year. Can we really look forward in confidence? Can we really look into a new year with all its uncertainties? With any assurance? As I have already said, you know, none of us knows what 2016 is going to bring into your life or bring into my life. Maybe 2016 frightens you. Maybe it's to do with your work. Whatever it is, the question is this morning, can we have any comfort any assurance to hold on to as we come now into another new year. Well, I want to bring you to a text this morning from which the Lord brings His message. And I have called God's message this morning four precious points for saved saints. Four precious points for saved saints. You know, friends, this morning, first of all, in this psalm, there's a text that brings us comfort that brings us assurance as we are about to adventure into another new year for whatever it holds. My text this morning is Psalm 23, and it's down there at verse 6, and this is the word of the Lord this morning. It says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, all the days of my life, 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's my text. And as I have said this morning, in that text, there are four precious points for saved saints. That's if you're saved this morning. That's if you know the Lord. They're no use to you if you don't know the Lord. And mind you, you need to know the Lord because if you don't know the Lord, you're going to hell, friends. You're without a Savior. You're without God. You're without Christ. But I want you to know you can have the Lord this morning. You need to be saved, dear, and you need to be saved, sir. And you need the Savior, and I trust you'll take him as your Savior. Trust him. And I want you to notice the first little precious point in that text. There is the pathway that is comforting, because here it is. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Do you know something, dear child of God, as we are about to go into a new year? We're traveling a pathway this morning that we've never traveled before. A pathway this morning that none of us knows what we're going to meet. A pathway that none of us knows what it has in store for us. But here's the comforting fact this morning, the comforting point concerning this path. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Do you know in this psalm we see that even though the shepherd leads, you notice that in the psalm, he leadeth me. Maybe 2016 is going to be a year where the Lord is going to lead us up very, very steep and rugged pathways. Maybe dark paths. Dreary paths. But here is the wonderful comforting truth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. You know, I want you to first of all think of the nature of God's goodness. In Zechariah chapter 9, 17, it says, How great is thy goodness! And I want not only to think this morning concerning the nature of God's goodness, but I want you to think this morning concerning the nature of God's mercy, because in Psalm 136, we read, His mercy endureth forever. I want you to just pause for a wee moment. Let's think this morning concerning the greatness of His goodness. And let us think this morning of the matchlessness of His mercy. Because it's God's great goodness this morning and God's matchless mercy that's following us and will follow us. Do you know that God's goodness and God's mercy each of them has a different job to do as we travel along this pilgrim pathway. You know, friend, goodness and mercy, God's goodness and God's mercy have two totally different jobs to do as they follow after us. I want you to think this morning, first of all, it's God's goodness and God's goodness takes care of our steps. Do you remember that? As we walk this pathway, it's God's goodness that takes care of our steps. God's goodness takes care of our feet. It's God's goodness that keeps us in step with God as we make this pilgrim journey. You know, as we face this sin coming year, you remember this that you'll have God's goodness coming after you, taking care of every step. You say to me, well, if that's God's goodness, and God's goodness takes care of my steps, and 
God's goodness takes care of my feet. Well, what does mercy do? Oh, friend, mercy is completely different. As God's goodness takes care of your steps and takes care of your feet, God's mercy takes care of our stumbles and takes care of our falls. You know, we all stumble, child of God, and we all fall. But along the pathway, God's mercy comes behind, and it's God's mercy that lifts us when we fall. And it's God's mercy that holds us while we stumble. And you know, as we make this journey down this unknown pathway, we have got God's goodness to watch over our steps and to keep us right. But we've got God's mercy to take care of our stumbles when we fall. Sure, do you not remember it was God's mercy that lifted Elijah from under the juniper tree? That was God's mercy at work. It was God's mercy that put David back on his feet again when David fell, when he committed adultery and murder. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us. Whether that pathway be rough or plain, God's taking care of us. Whatever way He leads, God will take care as we move along. Remember this child of God. His goodness takes care of our steps. His mercy takes care of our stumbles when we fall. That's the pathway that is comforting. Secondly, there is the period that is confirmed because it says there, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And that's the period that is confirmed this morning. It doesn't say, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me during the good days of my life. Sure, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me through the bright days of my life. No, no, no. Here's the period that is confirmed. All the days of my life. And I'll tell you, that's for the dark days. And I can tell you, 2016 may hold dark days for us, you know. And 2016 may hold for any of us difficult days and demanding days. But here's God's wonderful truth to your heart this morning. Surely... God's goodness and God's mercy shall follow us all the days. Let's hit this. All the days of our life. And you know this morning, child of God, even though the future seems bleak and it seems out of control and there seems to be no hope ahead for us. Listen, listen to the text. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days. All the days. Maybe 2016 looks very dark for someone here. Dark and dismal, difficult. But you know, God has 2016 in His hand. Whatever the new year brings, child of God, into that life of yours and into this life of mine, let us say this morning, God has it under His control. No matter how difficult, no matter how demanding, whatever comes, 2016 for you, child of God, and 2016 for me. God has it worked out already. Because He leads. And goodness and mercy follows us. On Christmas Day, 1939, King George VI, as Britain had entered into a new world war, Hitler and Germany seemed unstoppable. King George VI, during his, 
his Christmas speech of that year, quoted a poem written by Mary Louise Haskins, Britain was in a dark place. The Hitler and the German regime seemed unstoppable. But King George VI quoted this poem to the nation. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and better and safer than a known way. Wonders there's somebody here this morning and the new year seems very dark, very dismal. Think this morning of the pathway that is comforting. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Ah, oh, let's think of the period that is confirmed all the days of my life. But you know, there's a third precious point in this text. It's the prospect that is clear. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Do you know something, child of God? That's the wonderful prospect for all of us. At the end of life's journey, will all be in the house of the Lord. Who knows? Who knows this morning? 2016 could mean the year when we'll be in the house of the Lord. The Lord could come. And the Lord could come before this year is out. The Lord could come before this day is out, you know. Do you see this time next year? The Antichrist could be in power and the tribulation begin. I was saying this to a brother the other day, it can't begin because of the number of nations there is in your parks, as I aware that with you. The one that can hold these worlds in the power of his hand and the one who spoke the stars into space, he can make rack and ruin of nations to fulfill his plan. But listen, 2016 could be the year that the Lord may call us home. None of us know, you know. I'll tell you, 2016 could be the year the Lord calls me home. Could be. And if it is the case, thank God I'll be in the house of the Lord. See, this is the prospect that we have. At the end of life's journey, in the house of the Lord. Free from sickness, free from sorrow, free from sin. In the presence of the Lord. I often thought of that, you know. What if 2016 was the year the Lord's going to call me home? I'll tell you what it will be. It'll be glory for me. 
See if the Lord calls me home. Make sure you look about another man now who loves the Lord and who loves his word and who loves his people. It mightn't be me, it could be you. And that's labor for the master to see other people won for Christ. Come what may, come what must. It'll all end in the Father's house. The Lord Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. The prospect. That is clear. A young man met with Ira Sankey when Moody and Sankey were doing their evangelistic work in Glasgow. A young father told Mr. Sankey, he was Moody's song leader, he says, Mr. Sankey, my wee girl have called Maggie. She was saved at your last mission here. And as she lay dying, she sang the words of a hymn that was written by your friend, Fanny Crosby. Fanny Crosby and Sankey were close friends. And the day she died, the doctor was there, and the mother and the father were there. She was weak. She was weary. And she asked the mother to get a hymn book, just a little hymn book, out of the drawer. Turned to number 25. She says, I want to sing before I go home. Doctor says, you're too weak to sing. She says, sing, I must, and Jesus will give me the strength to sing. Do you know the verse of the hymn she sung? Hark. Tis the voice of angels, born in a song to me, over the fields of glory, over the jasper sea. Lift me up, mother, she said. Lift me up, I want to finish. She finished with these words. Then she fell asleep in Jesus, safe in the arms of Jesus, safe on his gentle breast, there by his love o'ershaded, sweetly my soul shall rest. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know, who holds the future? Because I know he lives. Fourthly and finally, the permanency, the permanency that is classified, I will dwell in the house of the Lord, here it is, forever. Ah, you know, child of God, the struggles and the sorrows and the troubles and the trials, they're just for time, you know. But to be in the Lord's house, it's forever. Oh, the children of the Lord, you know, we have a right to shout and sing. For the way is growing bright, and our souls are on the wing. And I'm going by and by, glory to God, to the palace of the King. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thanks, Brian. I'm telling you, child of God, we're going to the Father's house. Come what may, come what must, it all ends. In our heavenly home, oh, the valley might be dark, you know, 
The mountain might be steep, but he leads. And goodness and mercy are following to keep us on the road. And then that moment will come, you know, when it'll be forever with the Lord. And friends will be there I have loved long ago. Joy like a river around me will flow. And oh, to be near the dear Lord I adore will through the ages be glory for me. 2016, come what may, come what must, my hope is in the Lord. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us for how long, George? All the days of our life. Then what happens? And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Listen, whatever comes, the best for us is yet to be. And let's look for the eternal morning at one day will dawn upon us. May God comfort us and God assure us and strengthen us with a calm confidence as we face this new year. Our closing hymn this morning is number 807 in the Green Hymn Book. When all my labors and trials are o'er and I am 